Hello class. Um, I'd like to go over chapter three. Excel, logical and lookup functions. One word of warning as I proceed through the presentation, and that is this chapter is of all the four of the four chapters you'll be going over in Excel, this is the most complicated. Um, we will take our time. We will do a lot of exercises and problems um, because there are some functions that are not commonly used. They are very neat functions. They are very um, uh, useful functions, but because of their complexity and they're not used as often by many in the business sector, I suppose this is an area where most people are weakest. So this will be the, the most difficult chapter, but we will take our time and go through it. We have four lessons to go through, and we will take our time, we will get through it, and we will practice, practice, practice. But as always, post any questions in the Q&A section of your um, online um, classroom, and we will search the answers together. Okay, let's begin. Again, logical and, and lookup functions. We're going to talk about how to use various items within um, Excel. Um, one is the, fee, the freeze panes command, which takes a, 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 a header or a column or even the side of your document and you freeze it in, freeze it in place so that you can look at you can look at other aspects of the worksheet without moving and losing your headers. This can be very, very helpful when you're talking about a large worksheet. Scrolling can be cumbersome when you've got over 500 bits of piece of information. Um, we're going to go over the construction and use of formulas and statistical functions. We're going to construct some logical tests and we're going to evaluate contents of a cell as a result of those tests. We're going to use the if function. And those functions can be complicated, so I'm going to take my time going through this, but it's going to be no longer than a 15-minute lesson. But I want you to know that we have lots of practice tools available and lots of demonstration videos available, so you can get this if you practice. We're going to learn the AND function and the IF function. Sorry, let me go back. Um, we're going to use them both in, um, in an evaluation of a test, a multiple logical tests. What I mean by that is more than one, more than two, but even three logical tests within one command. That's going to be complicated, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how to construct a nested if function. And if functions, generally, will, you'll say, if this is true, then do something else. If this is false, then do something else. And so... These functions are simple in their under, in their application, but to construct them gets to be a little complicated. We have some rules that we'll have to go through. We're going to set up some conditional rules and formatting commands that will automatically be um, performed in various cell locations. We will also use these functions, and they are very useful, not difficult to understand, the count if function, the average if function, and the sum if function. And they are used um, respectively to count a number of, of cells within a range, average a number of cells within a range, and sum a number of cells in a range, given the if argument, meaning the conditional argument. If arguments are conditional arguments, they will either be true or false. Um, if they're both false, then the, the argument obviously will fail and your, your, your command won't work in Excel. So the argument has to have a true or false indication. And we'll talk about having to set up constructing those correctly so that you can get the um, answer that you need. The count ifs and the count and the uh, sum ifs functions really are for um, multiple range of, of values, an alternate range of values. So these functions are basically the same as average if and average and some ifs, but they do allow you to make alternate range of cells using more than one argument. And that's the most important distinction between the two. And we'll talk about those. We'll have lots and lots of examples to go over those in class as well as online. The VLOOKUP function we'll also go over, and the HLOOKUP function. We'll know what the difference is of the two and how we can use them in creating our um, worksheets and finding information on our worksheets. Again, this is definitely a, a tool that you can use to, to look up something in your, in your spreadsheet without having to scroll through a lot of information. And as I said, the more complicated a spreadsheet is, the larger the volume of information in the 
um, the spreadsheet, you all need tools like this to efficiently navigate through to get what you need. Um, we'll also do a web query, which I think is a kind of neat um, process. You can use queries within your worksheet, and we'll talk about those. Fairly easy process to do. Um, so specifically, freezing panes. There are times when you need to be aware of and see the header or the, t the top few rows of your worksheet. But because of the volume of the data that's contained in your worksheet, it's difficult to see it when you scroll down. This, this is where freezing panes becomes quite useful. It allows you to keep a header or column or row headings um, locked in place, and you allow you to scroll through the worksheet without um, losing that detail. So it functions. It so if you're looking at a, a spreadsheet and you're trying to calculate some information, but you need information from the top of the screen and you can't remember what the row headings look like. It's important to have the have those those paint those panes frozen. Now the function review. We're going to talk about some functions in the in, in our investment worksheet this time, and what we're going to do is we're going to be reviewing some of some functions that we've learned in previous chapters, but we're going to also add a couple more functions, which is the logical and lookup functions, and we're going to be doing more complicated. Um, um, commands within Excel, obviously step by step, using some very very um, some rules to make certain that our functions are correct, but we'll be expanding on our knowledge from chapter two. So why do we use those logical tests? Well, we want to know um, to evaluate a cell. We want to know what the contents is. is uh, the contents is what we think it's in there. If it is, it's true. If it's not, it's false. And what to do with that information. So our answer is going to be true or false. Um, with each one. But it's, again, it's a logical test are generally testing arguments within a, um, within a function. The if function is just that. If something is true, okay. If it's not true, okay. And it's just we want to tell Excel to do something if our logical argument is true. If our logical argument is false, we want it to do something or display something. So these functions are very useful because you can test a whole lot of information just by putting a function in and it uh, displaying the answer in the cell that you give it. The OR function works very much like the IF function. It's either if, or if, if, yes or no, or true or false. In this case, it will be an OR function. Either this is true or that is true. Either this is false or that is false. And again, we are, we, are de we are definitely testing the true or false of a particular argument in an OR fashion. The AND function is very much so like the OR function. Um, and it, again, provides you with a true or false, yes, no. Is it true that this function is correct? Is it false? That kind of thing. And it also displays the answer in the cell that you give it. These functions are very similar and often work very closely together and can be used in the same command. Now, the nested if functions, I want to go over this because we're not, we don't use these too much in business, but you still should you know what they are and how to use them in certain situations. Um, when you're trying to test for various possible outcomes and it requires more than one output, the nested function allows you to do that and it allows you to put it into, it allows you to incorporate it within a if function. So you have a function within a function. And this gets a little complicated, and we may go through a couple of examples. Um, I have not seen it happen practice regularly, but it is a very, on a higher level of complexity in terms of fun a logical functions within Excel. And again, using AND and OR is good because sometimes the function um, may be true, but you want to be able to, to, to I would say, uh, tightly define your um, your argument, your functions. And using both the AND or OR can definitely give you a, a better um, idea of whether or not your function or your answer is going to be correct. So we don't want to construct anything. We don't want to construct a very large IF function. Using the AND or OR um, function does allow you to be more efficient in constructing your functions and, and possibly more accurate. 
So conditional formatting, um, it just allows you to format based on the contents of a cell location. You can use logical tests to do that. And formatting could mean if the answer is true, shade this cell green. If the answer is false, shade this cell blue. I mean, and that's just really basic kind of things, but that's basically how uh, a conditional format would occur. It just allows you to apply formatting treatments to various cells based on an argument that you present, either an and, an if, or on or. Now this here is in placing quotation marks in logical expressions. This one makes more sense in application, but when you're using um, a logical function, you have to determine or tell Excel what to put in the output field, and you do that by placing quotations around that um, item. Using a, using logical function to evaluate percentages. Again, uh, we again we're using these functions to determine if the cell should have a symbol or it shouldn't have a symbol, and how to convert those symbols into a percent sign that you would like to see. And I don't see this very often, but it does allow the user to create um, a, a worksheet that's more uh, automatic. It will automatically display things that they want it to be displayed. So it, it makes it a more efficient um, output, more uh, systematic output, but also it, it does allow some efficiency in the construction of the, um, of the worksheet. And here are a few questions. These questions appear at the back of your text um, at each chapter. And I would suggest strongly, as I said in the past, to go through these questions and make certain that your answers are correct. Uh, we will display the answers um, in the online classroom. And, and the reason for that is to make certain that you understand um, the material that you've just read. And if you don't, you can go back. It's just a little quick assessment on how you stand with the material and, and what you read. Um, the count if function. And uh, the count function obviously counts um, different cells within a range. But the count if function is a little different. The count if function controls the number of cells in the range that contain numeric or text data. So it's more or less a conditional formatting. It's conditional based on an argument saying a true or false, if something's true or false. So you're going to count it if it meets a, a specific argument. And that's the only difference between the count function and the count if function. So you're going to allow you to, to selectively count the cells in a range based on a specific criteria. And the criteria generally is called the argument in Excel. You have to give it various arguments or criteria in which the system is going to test and give you a true or false indication. Average if it's the same thing, it, it differs because it's going to range, it's going to do a, a range of averaging based on what you provide but it also you can use it to select the cells once the condition is determined in your function these cells these functions work very much closely together and we will be working with each one in our spreadsheet um, the sum if function is the same. It's a mathematical sum function. However, it's similar to the to the average simply because it's going to be using a range of cells to collect the information. It's going to add them as opposed to averaging them or finding the um, the statistical mean of those items. And again, we just want to calculate something. We want to calculate the investment growth on a particular item. We have to give it a function to say if the criteria is meets this argument, then I want you to sum it. If not, I don't want you to sum it. This concludes our our um, chapter three lecture. Again, as I mentioned before, I suggest you read the chapter through, working with the Excel open at the time so that you can practice those skills that we go over. This is going to be a more complex um, chapter and we will take a lot of um, time to review as well as practice. But I urge you to answer, to ask any questions in the Q&A section of the discussion board and we will be doing a lot of practice to go over some of these skills and, and determine if there are any that you use in your workplace. Thank you.